Hello and welcome to another episode of Connecting the Dollars. It is Halloween week of 2024. And so we wanted to talk about um, this very popular topic. What do you do if you happen to inherit a haunted house? What do you yes, do? I think um, there's so many different ways to answer that. First of all, I would not spend the night in it. That's my Same. first hot tip. Um, I do have a friend who loves Halloween and I think she would definitely spend the night in it. Um, so I'll say that's, you know, personal choice of what you're up for. Um, but I do think that's one of the scariest things in Halloween movies, right, Emily? Mm -hmm. um, the house is always like a central thing, right? From The Shining to Poltergeist to... Yeah, I don't know. Those are classics, but even more, I'm not as good at more recent movies, but um, me either. But like the conjuring, right. the house on yeah. the hill, all those things. Yeah, Beetlejuice that yeah. just came out. You know, they're back in the haunted house there. So I think it happens in the movies a lot, but it does happen in real life too. Right? Sure, it could. I yes. mean, in general, if you may inherit something that you know you don't even know this distant relative or something could happen like that. Or perhaps you know the person, but you didn't know they had this asset. Um, so yeah. Or you didn't know it was haunted. You inherit <laughs> right. it and then find out it's haunted, right? Yes. So, yeah. That could be, that's a good one. But I, I think some things like, what would you do if you win the lottery um, are fun games to play. So, you know, that's kind of our game we're playing today, right? Like what yeah. do you do if you did inherit the haunted house? For sure. So the first thing I would do personally, I mean, like the the kid in me would want to go inside and explore and like, I don't know, actually poke around and see what I could find. But the realist in me knows I would like run out screaming the second I heard any any movement. Um, so the first thing that you should do if you inherit a house, a haunted house, especially is arrange for an appraisal appraisal and inspection. Yes, for sure, right? Yeah, maybe that house is abandoned. It's been, you know, just in this field, dis uh, deteriorating for several years. So you got to find out if it's safe and then, you know, if how much it's worth so you can decide what the next step should be. Yeah, um, I think finding out the worth of the of the asset when you inherit it is also important for tax reasons, right? Because when we... Uh, the current under current law, when you inherit a property uh, or an asset, the value it becomes the what's called the cost basis, the amount it's worth resets on the date of inheritance. So, if say your grandparent bought the house for fifteen thousand dollars, but you inherit it and it's now worth three hundred thousand dollars, so that's the value you go by for tax reasons. It's now worth three hundred thousand dollars in your portfolio. Right. So the date of the of the death becomes your cost basis. Um, yeah. yeah. So in general, also based on that information, if you find out it is inhabitable or not, um, is it a good investment for you? Like, is it something that you want to turn into an Airbnb or um, potentially have it be part of your, you know, a vacation home, maybe under your primary part of your primary residence. Um, mm -hmm. But either way, or sell it. Yeah, yeah, or you might wanna sell it. But either way, while you're making that decision, it is important that you are insured enough that you have the proper liability insurance. Yeah, right, because you can go from having minimal to a small amount of net worth. You, If this property is especially valuable, all of a sudden your net worth goes up by a lot. And if you're sued, you can be sued for a lot more money than you were in the past, right? There's nothing like getting a lot of money just to instantly lose it by um, something unfortunate happening, right? right? Um, maybe that's like the real horror part of some of these things. Um, Absolutely. Getting sued by somebody. Um, yeah. So I think you know, if you inherit the property and say uh, a relative had it insured, that doesn't necessarily, the, the insurance isn't going to transfer, right? right? So you have to make sure you get your own insurance coverage, um, not just for the, 
the property, but also make sure that includes a liability coverage, especially right. if it's been, if you're not living there, if you're not there to keep it up, to make sure it's safe, um, all those things. Right. Once you become the owner, it becomes your problem. Yeah, it's not just an asset, right? right? It can also be a big problem. And that like just being liable for somebody getting injured on your property um, mm -hmm. also becomes your problem, right? So yes. yes. So speaking of all of this um, in terms of how it's your asset, your responsibility, part of your portfolio now, and then you have to decide what is the best um, the best thing you should do with it. Um, what if your spouse inherits a property like how would that affect you yeah well that's um i think that's one of the most could be one of the most complicated questions um because it really depends on different laws that are in place in your state uh, in terms of m marital laws right so mm -hmm. For most places, if you inherit a property when you're married, that property stays in the individual's name. It does not become marital property. Um, so once that happens, the decision about how to handle that property could impact your spouse, um, but not necessarily, right? It really, really depends. So say if you have a marital property uh, you inherit a house and then you decide to rent it out to a tenant and then you're getting income from that tenant, that income could become marital property, right? right? Even though the underlying house might not be marital property. Right. So um, if you're not the spouse who inherits the house, but the spouse, the other spouse, right? You might be want to look out for your interests in this case, right? Or mm -hmm. the person who inherited the house might want to look out for their own interests. Um, and I think this happens to married couples, right? If they get married and they have one financial situation and then something happens during their lives and the financial situation changes significantly, such as inheriting a house, whether it's haunted or not, um, you may need to have, you know, in-depth conversations with your right, spouse. Right. Um, that can be tricky for anybody to discuss money with their sure. partner. Um, but, you know, this might be also the time when you need to consult with an attorney on potentially getting a post-nup agreement in place. A post-nup is, you know, a financial, like a lot of people have heard of prenup, like before you're married. Mm -hmm. You can also do a post-nup after you're married. That would govern these financial situations yeah um yeah it becomes part two right is also talking to your estate attorney exactly. right because this is going to impact your estate and eventually your the will that you hopefully already have in place that might need updating right yeah it, it becomes an estate planning issue for sure and even even if we're not talking about inheritances if you're currently living in a home that um only one spouse's name is on the deed like a lot of people will assume like oh well the other spouse will just be able to live there after they pass away but if they don't have the proper um, documentation the proper will the updated you know you can update the deed so yeah. you're both on it then that poor spouse you know it might have to go the house would have to go through probate and it would just be a big mess for them when you're already dealing with you know, a difficult time. So yeah, homes become, can become very, very yeah. complicated very quickly. Yes. And I do think one of the issues that a lot of people make certain assumptions about how things work and the assumptions could be wrong. They could be partially correct, but a lot of time, or maybe it was correct in your parents' day and the law right. has changed. Maybe it was correct in the state you grew up in, but you're now in a new state that has a different law. Um, these things aren't necessarily things that are common sense or even make sense. Um, and that's why we say you need to understand, you know, the law, talk to a lawyer about yes. how it could impact you. Yes. So in the example of The Shining, Oh yes, my that's my favorite movie. So I want to talk about the shiny too. I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah. um, Jack's wife probably should have checked out what was going on with the deed. You know, maybe she could have. 
I don't know, figured something out, made some other choices. Yeah, that well, is- right. So, uh, yeah. So if we're assuming that people have seen The Shining, right? Jack is, the character is played by Jack Nicholson, who's the caretaker. And the wife, in the movie version at least, does all the work, right? Even though Jack is the one that's technically hired. Um, right. So there's so many marital, spousal issues with finances that come up in that movie which I feel like kind of ruins the movie to talk about that kind of stuff about it but there are there are a lot of lessons there right um yes I agree um but in that one it's not really clear right if Jack was hired there or if he already maybe lived there and was haunting it right um if you've seen the movie there's I don't know there's different questions about who he really was right right just, um, yeah, looking at it on the surface level, let's say he owned the property, then when he was no longer, how did it happen? He became like part of the house. Yeah, maybe he froze. Maybe he froze. In any yeah. case, what does Wendy do with yeah. this building now? Right. I don't know. Hopefully, they ha- she had a good life insurance policy in place. At the very least, um, to cover her and the, you know, when you're still in your working years, that's a good time to get a life insurance policy in place Mm -hmm. because you lose a spouse abruptly. I mean, even though she was the one doing all the work, right. True. He was the one getting paid. So she's losing her job and maybe losing her house too. If she was living at the hotel, not that she would want to keep living there necessarily, but um, yeah, she's lost her means of income, her. Yeah. Eventually where she was living. Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of things, right? People will assume, oh, like the wife, she's better now because she's away from that situation, but um, she'll have a lot of financial issues going forward, right? It's true. Um, When art and entertainment becomes reality, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's so many we were we while we were thinking about what to do for this episode we started talking about all these different horror movies and then just realized that neither of us really like horror movies anymore <laughs> i've seen a bunch as a kid um but yeah not really our thing yeah. so we can't yeah. be uh, i did see the new expert. beetlejuice movie that came out recently but i don't, I don't think it was that it's really a horror movie right it's just kind yeah. of silly it's just kind of fun um mm-hmm. yeah that's also awesome. lots of haunted some haunted houses in that movie right yes there are mm-hmm. anyway we just wanted to talk about ghosts today or potential ghosts and try to tie it to personal finance so mm-hmm. um that's our little spooky episode for you all yeah i will um oh i was just going to add there was yeah. an article in the new york times recently a week or so ago about how to sell a haunted house that has some more logistics in terms of real estate brokers, how they position the house. One real estate broker hires psychics to come in and cleanse the house of spirits and energies and that type of stuff, Um, which I think is pretty silly, but you know, it's people believe people believe that stuff. And also, even if you think it's silly, if the buyer believes it, you know, you have to yeah. address it at some somehow. So um, yes. they had some good tips in there. So we'll link that in the show notes. I'll do a, a, a gift article so people can read it if they want, if they Excellent. don't have a subscription. Cool, cool. All right. Well, let's wrap it up here and remind everyone that this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. And education, I believe. <laughs> um, it is not to be taken as investment advice, tax advice, or legal advice. Um, so if you like what you heard, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're listening there. Please follow us on Apple Podcasts or any podcast um, app that you find us. Leave a comment if you wish. And um, you can always reach out to us at info at connecting the dollars.com. We'd like to hear about what your scary movie is or your scary financial situation. You're equipped to and what and what you us. would do if you inherited on yes. a house. Yes. yes. 
I love definitely. I love this stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> we will end it here and we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye.